New Arch Deluxe with Bacon. October's Taste of the Month at McDonald's. New McD. LT. It's a good time for the great taste. Burger Chef's got big, juicy, terrific burgers for you. Once popular, certain hamburgers have mysteriously vanished from restaurant menus, leaving many burger enthusiasts longing for their return. From the McDonald's Arch Deluxe to Wendy's Hot and Juicy Burger, why do these once famed burgers disappear? Join us as we explore the 20 famous hamburgers that have vanished from restaurants. Introducing the burger with the grown-up taste, McDonald's Arch Deluxe. In 1996, McDonald's introduced the Arch Deluxe, a burger designed to appeal to adults. Created by the company's executive chef, Andrew Salvaggio, it featured a quarter-pound beef patty on a potato flour sesame seed bun with toppings like peppered bacon, lettuce, tomato, American cheese, onions, ketchup, and a special Dijonese sauce, which combined Dijon mustard and mayonnaise. Despite its rich taste and unique ingredients, the Arch Deluxe failed to connect with consumers. McDonald's spent over $300 million on marketing. The burger was intended for a more mature audience, but its high price and unconventional advertisements did not attract the desired customer base. As a result, poor sales led to the Arch Deluxe being discontinued in the late 1990s. As we've seen, the Arch Deluxe's grand attempt to win over adults fell flat. Could Burger King's nostalgic Yumbo fare any better? Let's explore its journey next. We would like to introduce a new word to the English language. Yumbo. 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 A hot ham and cheese sandwich often known to cause insatiable desire in those who come near it. The Burger King Yumbo, a hot ham and cheese sandwich, first appeared in 1968. It included slices of ham and melted American cheese on a hamburger bun, becoming a popular choice for a quick warm snack due to its simple yet satisfying taste. However, by 1974, Burger King removed the Yumbo from its menu as the company began focusing on more traditional burgers. In 2014, Burger King briefly revived the Yumbo, this time adding lettuce and mayonnaise on a toasted hoagie bun. Despite its nostalgic appeal, the reintroduced Yumbo did not achieve lasting success and was soon phased out again as consumer preferences shifted towards more diverse and gourmet burger options. The Yumbo initially gained popularity because of its straightforward, comforting flavors, but it eventually faded from the menu as competition in the fast food industry increased and customer taste evolved. McDonald's new McDLT. It could be the best tasting lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. The McDonald's McDLT, introduced in 1984, was a burger designed to keep the hot and cold ingredients separate until ready to eat. It featured a beef patty, cheese, and the bottom bun on one side, while the lettuce, tomato, pickles, and top bun were on the other, all in a styrofoam container. This packaging aimed to keep the hot side hot and the cold side cold. The McDLT became popular for its fresh taste and the novelty of assembling the burger yourself. However, despite its initial success, it faced criticism due to the environmental impact of its styrofoam packaging. By the early 90s, growing environmental concerns and pressure from activists led McDonald's to discontinue the McDLT in 1991. The burger's discontinuation marked a shift towards more eco-friendly packaging solutions as McDonald's responded to the increasing demand for environmentally conscious practices. Open wide, America! Burger Chef's got big, juicy, terrific burgers for you! The Burger Chef Big Chef, introduced in 1965, was a double-decker hamburger featuring two beef patties, cheese, lettuce, and a tangy sauce on a toasted bun. It was created by the Burger Chef fast food chain, which began in Indianapolis, Indiana, and quickly spread across the United States. The Big Chef gained popularity for its hearty taste and satisfying combination of flavors, similar to what McDonald's later offered with the Big Mac. However, by the 1980s, Burger Chef began to decline, and the chain was sold to Hardee's in 1982. Many locations were either rebranded or closed, leading to the disappearance of the Big Chef. Although it was briefly reintroduced at some locations, it couldn't maintain its popularity without the backing of a thriving chain. The Big Chef is fondly remembered by those who enjoyed its unique taste, but it ultimately faded away as Burger Chef's presence dwindled. You know, Wendy's Super Bar is great for families because there's something for everyone. In 1988, Wendy's introduced the Super Bar, an all-you-can-eat buffet 
that featured a wide range of foods like Mexican dishes, pasta, salads, and the Super Bar Cheeseburger. The cheeseburger was a standout item, offering a classic flavor with a juicy beef patty, melted cheese, lettuce, and tomatoes served on a soft bun. The Super Bar quickly became popular due to its variety and affordability, costing only $2.99. However, maintaining the buffet presented significant challenges. Keeping the food fresh, clean, and well-stocked, especially during peak times, proved difficult. Additionally, the low price made it hard for Wendy's to generate a profit. By the early 90s, these logistical issues, along with concerns over quality control, led to the discontinuation of the Super Bar, including its popular cheeseburger. Despite its initial success, the challenges in maintaining the Super Bar ultimately led to its demise. As Wendy's Super Bar faced challenges and eventually disappeared, did Hardee's face similar struggles with their menu items? Let's explore the rise and fall of the Deluxe Husky. Where are you guys going to get better burgers than mine? At Hardee's? They've got a big Deluxe with a tasty new sauce, a quarter pound burger with all the fixes. Oh. Hardee's Deluxe Husky was a popular burger in the 70s. Hardee's a fast food chain founded by Wilbur Hardy in 1960 introduced this burger featuring a juicy beef patty. Fresh lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, and a special sauce all served on a sesame seed bun. The Deluxe Husky was loved for its rich, savory flavor and satisfying texture, making it a favorite among customers. During its peak, this burger was a staple on Hardy's menu, attracting many fans. However, by the late 1970s to early 1980s, Hardee's began streamlining its menu to focus on new items and improve efficiency. As part of this strategy, the Deluxe Husky was phased out, much to the disappointment of its loyal customers. The decision to remove it reflected Hardee's broader efforts to adapt to its changing consumer preferences and stay competitive in the fast food industry. It's my classic jumbo burger with fresh lettuce and tomato, and it's still just 99 cents. The Bonus Jack was a well-known burger from Jack in the Box, first introduced in 1970 to compete with McDonald's Big Mac. It consisted of two beef patties, American cheese, shredded lettuce, pickles, and Jack's secret sauce, all layered on a three-piece bun. The Bonus Jack was celebrated for its savory taste and satisfying blend of flavors, becoming a favorite among customers. In the 1970s, it gained popularity as a hearty and flavorful meal option, However, by the late 70s, Jack in the Box decided to revamp its menu, focusing on new promotions, which led to the discontinuation of the Bonus Jack. Although it was removed from the regular menu, it occasionally reappeared due to popular demand. The decision to phase out the Bonus Jack was motivated by the need to simplify operations and introduce new items that better aligned with changing consumer preferences. Burger King brings back the flavor crispy golden fish fillet. The Burger King Whaler, introduced in the mid-1960s, was a popular fish sandwich created to rival McDonald's filet -O fish It consisted of a crispy filet topped with tartar sauce and lettuce, all placed within a soft bun. Known for its tasty, savory flavor and satisfying crunch, the Whaler became a favorite among customers. At its peak, it was a staple on Burger King's menu, appreciated for its distinctive taste and texture. However, by the mid-1990s, Burger King chose to rename and reformulate the Whaler to stay competitive with other fast food fish sandwiches. It was rebranded as the BK Big Fish, featuring changes in both recipe and presentation. This shift was part of Burger King's broader strategy to adapt to changing consumer preferences and market trends. The decision to phase out the Whaler reflected the company's efforts to remain relevant in a competitive fast food landscape. The Sonic Steak Sandwich was a popular menu item introduced by Sonic Drive-In, a chain founded by Troy Smith in the 1950s. This sandwich included a tender steak patty topped with fresh lettuce, tomato, and a special sauce, all served on a toasted bun. Its rich, savory flavor and satisfying texture made it a favorite among customers. During the 1970s and early 1980s, the Sonic Steak Sandwich was widely enjoyed by those seeking a hearty meal. However, by the late 80s to early 90s, Sonic simplified its menu to match better changing customer preferences. As part of this shift, the Sonic Steak Sandwich was removed. The decision to phase it out was driven by the need to streamline operations and introduce new items that resonated more with customers. 
Despite its popularity, it was retired to make way for a more focused menu. As we reflect on the Sonic Steak Sandwich's rise and fall, could another fast food item have faced a similar fate? Let's explore the Hula Burger's short-lived attempt at success. In the early 1960s, Ray Kroc, who led McDonald's expansion, introduced the Hula Burger. This sandwich was designed for Catholics who avoided meat on Fridays. It featured a slice of grilled pineapple and American cheese on a bun. Kroc thought this meatless option would be popular, especially during Lent. However, the Hula Burger did not catch on with customers. The combination of sweet pineapple and cheese did not taste good to many people, and it failed to blend well with the bun. During a test run, the Hula Burger was compared to Lou Groen's filet fish a breaded fish sandwich. The filet fish far outperformed the Hula Burger, selling 350 sandwiches compared to just six Hula Burgers. Because of its poor reception, the Hula Burger was quickly removed from the menu in 1963. In contrast, the filet fish became a permanent menu item and remains popular today. Cheeseburger is back. Hardy's Big Twin was a popular burger in the 1970s and 80s. Launched by Hardy's, a fast food chain started by Wilbur Hardy in 1960, the Big Twin featured two beef patties, lettuce, cheese, and a special sauce, all between a sesame seed bun. It was created to compete with McDonald's Big Mac and Burger King's Whopper. The Big Twin was known for its juicy, flavorful taste, with the special sauce adding a distinctive touch. It quickly became a favorite among customers for its hearty and satisfying flavor. However, by the mid-90s, Hardee's decided to update its menu to meet changing taste and new competition. They introduced the Thick Burger, a larger and more premium option that quickly became popular. As a result, the Big Twin was discontinued to make way for these new offerings. Wendy's new big classic hamburger. This is the good stuff. This Wendy's Big Classic was launched in 1986 as part of a major menu overhaul. It aimed to provide a heartier burger choice, featuring a quarter-pound beef patty with lettuce, tomatoes, mayonnaise, ketchup, onions, pickles, and grill seasoning, all on a Kaiser roll. This burger was intended to compete with McDonald's Big Mac and Burger King's Whopper. The Big Classic was known for its juicy and flavorful taste, with the Kaiser roll giving it a distinctive twist. It quickly gained popularity among customers who enjoyed its large size and satisfying flavor. However, by 2007, Wendy's decided to update its menu to better align with changing consumer taste and increasing competition. They introduced new items like the Baconator, which included multiple layers of bacon and cheese for a more indulgent option. As part of this menu change, the Big Classic was eventually discontinued. The Burger King Mushroom Double Swiss was a popular burger introduced in the late 1980s. It had two flame-grilled beef patties, Swiss cheese, and a generous amount of sautéed mushrooms all inside a sesame seed bun. Known for its rich, savory flavor, the mushrooms paired perfectly with the creamy Swiss cheese. The burger quickly became a favorite among Burger King fans who enjoyed its unique taste. It was especially popular in the early 1990s, a time when gourmet-style burgers were trending in fast food. Despite its early success, the Mushroom Double Swiss was taken off the menu in the late 90s. This change was part of Burger King's routine updates to keep the menu fresh and in tune with changing consumer tastes. As new trends and preferences emerged, the demand for the Mushroom Double Swiss decreased, leading to its eventual removal from the menu. As we remember the unique Mushroom Double Swiss, what other fast food creations tried to reinvent the burger? Let's explore the McLean Deluxe and its ambitious attempt at a healthier fast food option. Introducing McLean Deluxe, made with a 91% fat-free beef patty. Low fat and delicious, can't be done. The McDonald's McLean Deluxe was launched in 1991 as a healthier alternative to traditional fast food burgers. 
Created by food scientists from Auburn University, it had a patty made with 91% lean beef and carrageenan, a seaweed extract to lower the fat content. This burger came with ketchup, mustard, lettuce, pickles, and a tomato on a bakery-style roll, aiming to be a lighter choice compared to the Big Mac. However, despite its innovative design, the McLean Deluxe struggled to become popular. Many customers found the patty to be bland and missed the rich taste of a regular burger. The carrageenan ingredient also faced criticism, with some people making jokes about seaweed and hamburgers. By 1996, poor sales and a lack of consumer interest led to its discontinuation. The McLean Deluxe is remembered as a bold effort to appeal to health-conscious consumers during the diet trend of the early 1990s. Wendy's new Frescata sandwiches. It's better here. Wendy's introduced their Frescata sandwiches in April of 2006 as a fresh alternative to their usual burgers, aiming to compete with popular deli chains like Subway and Quiznos. The Frescata line included options like the Frescata Club, roasted turkey and basil pesto, black forest ham and Swiss, and roasted turkey and Swiss. These sandwiches featured high quality meats and unique sauces on artisan bread designed to offer a gourmet experience at fast food prices. Despite the initial excitement, the Frescata line faced several challenges. Customers appreciated the fresh and flavorful taste, but there were issues with consistency and longer preparation times compared to typical fast food items. Wendy's also struggled to maintain consistent quality across locations. By December of 2007, Wendy's decided to discontinue the Frescata sandwiches due to low sales and operational difficulties. They couldn't compete effectively with established deli chains and their own popular burgers. McDonald's cheddar melts. It's beef from McDonald's, a quarter pound on a toasted rye bun, but it won't stay around. McDonald's cheddar melts. The McDonald's cheddar melt was a special burger that first appeared in 1988. It had a quarter pound beef patty with creamy cheddar cheese sauce, grilled onions, and a bit of teriyaki sauce, all on a soft rye bun. This mix of flavors created a rich and savory taste with a hint of sweetness from the onions and teriyaki sauce. It quickly became popular with customers who enjoyed its unique flavor. However, despite its initial success, the cheddar melt was taken off the menu in the early 90s. It was originally intended to be a limited time offer and never became a permanent item. McDonald's occasionally brought it back for brief periods, but it never stayed long enough to become a regular menu item. The special ingredients and preparation likely made it difficult to keep consistent across all locations, which contributed to its limited availability. While McDonald's cheddar melt was a memorable treat, what bold and smoky innovation did Burger King bring to the table next? Let's explore the Western Whopper. That Western Whopper looks good. It is. Yeah, but does it taste Western? Yeah. How Western? Western Western. Define Western. The Burger King Western Whopper was launched in 1996 as a new take on the classic Whopper. It came with barbecue sauce, cheddar or American cheese, and crispy bacon, giving it a smoky and savory taste that was different from the traditional Whopper. The burger was designed to evoke the flavors of a Western-style barbecue, attracting customers who liked bold and hearty tastes. The Western Whopper quickly became popular because of its unique flavor and the novelty of its ingredients. People especially enjoyed the tangy barbecue sauce and the crunchy bacon, which added a satisfying texture to each bite. Despite its early success, the Western Whopper was discontinued in the late 90s and early 2000s. This was part of Burger King's strategy to rotate menu items and introduce new ones to keep the menu fresh and interesting. McDonald's has bacon bacon double double cheeseburgers with hickory smoked bacon, golden melted cheese, and a delicious double layer of juicy beef. So come the McDonald's bacon double cheeseburger was a popular item introduced in the late 1960s. It had two juicy beef patties, crispy bacon, American cheese, pickles, onions, ketchup, and mustard, all in a soft sesame seed bun. Customers loved its rich, savory taste and the satisfying crunch of bacon. At its peak, the Bacon Double Cheeseburger was well known for its hearty flavor and affordability, making it a great choice for filling a meal at a reasonable price. However, by the late 1990s, McDonald's decided to remove this specific burger from their menu as part of their strategy to rotate menu items. 
They introduced similar burgers with different names or slight changes in ingredients, such as the McDouble and the Bacon McDouble. Despite its removal, the Bacon Double Cheeseburger remains a fond memory for many fans of the chain. As we remember the beloved Bacon Double Cheeseburger, what other burger innovations have reshaped fast food history? Let's explore Wendy's Hot and Juicy Burger next. I went into Wendy's for the first time. I had a hot and juicy and I loved it. Wendy's Hot and Juicy Burger was introduced in 2011 to honor the chain's founder, Dave Thomas. It featured a thicker, juicier beef patty, fresh toppings, and a buttered toasted bun, making it a standout item on Wendy's menu. The Hot and Juicy Burger quickly gained popularity for its rich flavor and satisfying texture, appealing to customers who enjoyed a high-quality, hearty burger. Its fresh, never-frozen beef gave it a juicy and flavorful taste that set it apart from other fast food options. Despite its success, Wendy's decided to phase out the Hot and Juicy Burger in the early 2010s. This change was part of a broader strategy to update their burger selection with new Dave's Single, Double, and Triple line. These new burgers kept the essence of the Hot and Juicy, but featured updated ingredients and branding to attract a new generation of customers.